Hello there, this is episode 53 of JW Watch, the show that keeps a close eye on all things JW, offering Jehovah's Witnesses a more objective viewpoint on current developments that the governing body almost certainly doesn't want them to hear. As we reach the end of March 2024, the global community of current and former Jehovah's Witnesses is still reeling from the changes that were introduced on March 15th, when we learned that the rules on shunning were to be changed, meaning that Jehovah's Witnesses could offer a greeting to disfellowshipped ones and invite them to meetings. We also learned that the clothing requirements would be made more flexible so that women could wear pants to the Kingdom Hall, provided they weren't giving an item, and men could wear shirts with no tie, so long as they too weren't involved on the platform. And this comes on the back of a number of very recent changes, beards, etc., that have many current and former Jehovah's Witnesses mightily confused. I thought it would be worthwhile to do a live stream where we just uh, digest all of this and, and the fallout from these recent changes. Joining me to discuss this development is JW Watch team member Jonathan LaForge and it's great to welcome back Chaka Yumba. Hello gentlemen. Hello Lloyd, how are you? Very well. Hi Lloyd. Hi. Hi Lloyd, thanks for having me on the show. It, it's well, g- great to welcome you back. Uh, Jonathan, this is your first time. Um, we also will be joined hopefully shortly by Sherry who is uh, another JW Watch team member. In fact, right on cue, uh, although it seems her camera isn't working yet, but as soon as her camera is switched on, uh, I will join her to the stream. So, um, you know, first thoughts, again, we're, we're like two weeks on from this huge change. And, you know, all of us are probably in positions where we have friends and loved ones who are still believing Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, Assuming you have some kind of finger on the pulse of of what's going on for believing Jehovah's Witnesses, what 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 impact do you think these changes have been having? Um, yeah, I, th- I think we we've had this discussion uh, before, Lloyd, where we say that the the Jehovah's Witness religion is practiced differently depending on where you're based. So um, I was talking to a family member. Um, just not going to mention what <laughs> what the relation is, but a close family member, and they were saying where they are based in my home country in Zambia, the elders are still taking quite a hardline stance on things like beards, things like um, not turning up or turning up the meetings without a tie, without a, a jacket. So I think I think it just depends on where you're based. Uh, in terms of how the these new policies are being implemented, I think you could say that I think the organization is probably in a bit of shock in terms of the membership because of how drastic some of these changes seem to be. Over in the US, I mean, I can tell you just from my social media, I'm still connected with certain people and I, I see them and you see a lot of bushy, bushy faces that look like mine, but I did it before it was cool. Well, but, uh, uh, Chaka didn't get the memo. Uh, yeah, yeah, my face is yeah. my face is bushy as is yours, Jonathan. We'll see. <laughs> they we'll, give we'll those out Sherry. when you leave. Can Sherry give us a beard? Um, no, no beard from Sherry, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, welcome, That's Sherry. Right, How Sherry, are you doing? Just bring it around this way, girl. Just... <laughs> Good. I'm well. Thank you. Great. I'm having a little trouble with the audio. It's not very loud on this end, so if I miss anything, my apologies. No problem at all. I was just asking the team and. Jonathan was about to give his take. You know, um, it's been two weeks pretty much since the announcements and we're we're just kind of um, getting a feel for the fallout really among uh, maybe friends and family members uh, who are Jehovah's Witnesses because obviously even though all of us on this panel are no no longer identify as Jehovah's Witnesses, that doesn't mean we're still not connected in some way. So, uh, Jonathan, you're about to tell us about your Uh, perspective yeah i mean the perspective i get is lots of bushy faces for people trying to to go with the direction but a lot of confusion among the older generation you know you get things like 
I mean, when you when you keep the pulse on Reddit, as an example, there's a lot of posts about people being shaken loose by this or just not wanting to really comply. Mm. Is that your thought, Sherry? Oh, we can't hear you just right now. Oh, and my mic is muted. Sorry. That's OK. <laughs> Yep, I'm having I'm having audio problems here and can't hear no a whole problem. lot. <laughs> we can Let hear you. Let me see you, if though. I can if I can figure this out. Okay. No problem. Well, perhaps while while Sherry uh, messes with the cables and twi twiddles a few knobs, um, <laughs> let's take some comments. Uh, we have classical gas emissions. It's a very specific <laughs> username. <laughs> That, that's what I always call them. Um, hello from Canada. <laughs> I never make these live streams, praise Jar. Um, we also, ha nice to see Arthur Weber, uh, another JW Watch team member also in the chat. Uh, Rick Bloza says, can the women wear hot pants now? Uh, well, that would be a change. Um, I'm afraid not. not. It's not just slacks. Just not slacks. an entirely unwelcome change for, for many <laughs> men, I, I would imagine. Um, the back rooms would be busy. <laughs> the back rooms would be very busy. Um, so Sebastian uh, says, on the national television in Holland, a documentary about Jehovah's Witness, it's a lot on the news. By the way, it seems there's some... Um, a little bit of background noise coming through on one, on one of the mics for one of you guys, so you might need to use the uh, the mute button uh, if you're not talking. Perfect. Um, nice to see um, jobs, tears, and jewelry. Another very specific um, username, but it's nice to see Melinda there. Hello from Las Vegas. Um, first, my first time in 35 years out of this cult. Says Glenn wow. Edwards. Um, classical gas emission says 90 years to figure out beards are UK are okay and I guess that's kind of one of the the biggest kind of one of the strangest things about all of these changes is you know how could it be that it's taken them this long to, to kind of reach these conclusions that you know it, it was so clear from the beginning that the beards rule was unscriptural um, and that the the pants rule for women was also ha had no scriptural backing. And yet all of a sudden, Holy Spirit has, has shone new light and these things are now acceptable. How could that be? Because it's not a scriptural religion. It's just <laughs> pretending to be. I, I mean, I, I, not to say anything specific about mm. the scriptures, but uh, the, this is a cultural decision. Mm. These are cultural norms, like like Mormons. They didn't. They still don't really do shaved faces or mm. uh, bearded faces as as practicing Mormons because it identifies them as a culture. So, and this is what you get when you when you change this rule, you get people feeling uncomfortable going to the Kingdom Hall because they look around and so much is different, and you don't really want that. If if you are a, a group like this, you want it to feel like home, and this makes it feel unfamiliar. Mm. Absolutely. I'm, I'm sorry, you might hear me some background noise. That's okay, that's thing. fine. Yeah, um, yeah I, I think this is, uh, the, the problem is that they make all these rules that are not scriptural, and then they have to backtrack, because I think you, you have a whole religion that has been built on unscriptural foundations, as Jonathan was saying, and now they have to backtrack. And the thing, I think, well, I personally would respect them more if they said, if they just came up and said, this was on scripture from the beginning, and we've had a look at the scriptures, and now we identify that there was no basis for us imposing that rule, but they almost make it look like, yeah, they've, now they've um, had that realization by means of the Holy Spirit, or sometimes they try to shame the members like Stephen Lett did when they did the U-turn on beards where he was actually blaming the members for whatever reaction they have. So if you said, yes, I was right all the time, 
that's you have a very bad attitude you're running ahead of the chariot and if you're saying why are they making all these changes when i've been a staunch defender of this policy all these years again you have a very bad attitude so there is actually no humility on their part to actually concede like guys we really got this wrong and we're sorry that we've caused a lot of distress to a lot of people for enforcing a rule that was not scripture in the beginning they just act like you know <laughs> it is what it is yeah indeed my, my ups my observation on that is their their authority is essentially a card trick. It's like a sleight of hand that they continue to play in front of the witnesses. And the only way that sleight of hands work is you can't break the illusion. So if you do too much that lets them see under the table and, and kind of lets them bring these thoughts into their head like, hmm, are these guys just making it up? It's broken. Yeah. It would be just to kind of piggyback on that uh, illustration, you know, uh, you get a G for illustrations, by the way, Jonathan. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, would, I learned from the best. <laughs> <laughs> it would it would be comparable to like a magician getting up on stage to do a trick, and immediately the audience is looking for like a sleight of hand, or looking for a trap door, or mm. looking for something that's going to explain what they're about to see. And it would be like if the magician did multiple pauses and multiple obvious kind of procrastinations and fumbled um, to the point where it was just obvious that what they were going to see had no, there was nothing mysterious about it. Um, aren't the governing body kind of skating on thin ice a bit by making so many changes so quickly? And do you think that they there's, there's a chance they might realise that making so many changes so quickly is going to backfire. They seem desperate to make changes. You know, I, I mean, looking at it from an, now an outside perspective, I, I can't imagine what it must feel like from the inside. But from an outside perspective, they're just the the chariot is flying down the rails or almost running off the rails. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, I think that the, the, the difficulty you have with this current governing body is, um, I think previous governing bodies, although they, they've all had flaws, they've all been imperfect, they've, as far as I'm concerned, none of them have been spirit anointed or directed by Jehovah's Holy Spirit, but at least I think they had kind of a bit of a handle on the Bible, so they, they could read, they read the Bible, so like Fred Franz, for example, he literally wrote the New World Translation that was used up until 2013. So, so they had a bit of at least depth to them. So when they wrote stuff, even if they were making up, at least they could use some scriptures to back up what they were um, presenting to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Whereas this current governing body, I, I highly doubt it if they actually read the Bible, because you see like Mark Sanderson, he turns up with his phone and he gives a talk at the convention from his phone. <laughs> like, does this guy even read the Bible? So when they make these changes, they just say the governing body has decided and they don't even back it up in any way by, with any scriptures. So it, it then becomes very evident that they're just making stuff up and even the most... Um, devout Jehovah's Witness must be questioning themselves. How come they're just saying, what, what authority are they using? What basis are they using to make these changes? I think th that's the danger they're running into where I think those, they'll clearly um, show themselves up for being charlatans. Hmm. And, and to, to that point, Chaka, like they put it on full display when they're just saying, we, we have decided, the governing hmm. body has decided. And then if you recall in the annual meeting when they, when, um, winder i think it is got up and explained precisely how they make these decisions and there's no jesus in there there's no jehovah in there there's just there's just we get together we have some feelings we look at some things and then we make a decision and it's a board meeting i mean mm -hmm. that's what's described and i got crisis of conscience right here on my right that's that's the same process it's been the same process the whole time Kat says the governing body are control freaks, can only go so long before they're craving for more. Um, fellow JW Watch team member says that's what ruins a magic tr magic tricks, unnatural moves. Incidentally, Arthur Webber, bit of a magician himself. He's is. got a few tricks <laughs> if you ever meet him in person. Um, and Melinda says, do you believe... Thank you for the super chat, by the way, Melinda. Uh, Melinda's also a, a member of the channel. Uh, do you believe more big changes are coming or are they going to see how everyone takes these changes? Good question for the panel. 
Uh, I think we were debating this a few months ago, weren't we, um, or, mm. as, as a team around when they uh, they made those changes to the doctrines around um, the Great Tribulation, who dies at the Great Tribulation, and so on. And I think some of us felt, well, that's meaningless, and others felt um, there's something coming. So I think they have some kind of long-term plan with regards to the changes. Some of these changes, I, I think their hand has been forced. So um, with regards to the... I don't, if, I don't even know if you can call it a relaxation of the shining rules, which really isn't a relaxation. It's almost like a magic trick again that they're playing. I think their hand has been forced, but I think they have the long-term vision of the things they want to change because they don't just, uh, if you research the history of the organization, how they function, they don't just make such doctrinal changes um, out of the blue. It's not like they read the Bible and then the Bible forces them into these changes. They're always reacting to what's happening in the world around them. So they probably have some long-term plan and maybe somehow this has been uh, rushed by the fact that they're facing this situation in Norway. So they're being, they're being forced to, to make even more changes uh, prematurely because changes like Sanderson announced in the, JDO, in the governing body update number two, those would, all, those would usually be reserved for the annual meeting, but they've been pushed into a corner and um, yeah, they're, running around like headless chickens. Yeah, and I think the desperation to which they're doing this kind of betrays, there might be some long-term planning. There, that might be that this has been in someone's head, for instance, Mark Sanderson's head for some time. Oh, we should make these changes, and now he's got the opportunity. But he's clearly responding to what is happening within the organization or outside even. Circumstances are causing him and them to pursue these changes with such veracity. Um, uh, Shaka mentioned Norway, and I just wanted to mention on that, I think it's really interesting that even though they had the news of what happened in Norway before they made the changes the, to pants and to and whatever changes they made to shunning um they didn't announce it on jw.org until march 28th just a few days ago so i think if if they had done that in reverse they would have broken the illusion even more where if they had actually said what happened in the norway case and then came out with a governing body update like two days later you know saying hey we're making some changes just coincidence we're going to be changing some very minor things on shunning I also, not to say too much, did you notice how much children were a focus of that announcement? I went back and watched it this morning, and a lot of their process changes have to do with minor children. I think they're trying to create the illusion that they are not indoctrinating children by making these changes. Uh, specifically, the change I'm talking about is if a child, a baptized child commits a serious sin, a judicial committee may not need to be formed if the elders feel as though the parents are handling it. I'll leave that for the panel. Yeah. Um, Sherry, nice to have you back, by the way. Uh, what are your thoughts? Do you think we can expect more changes or do you think the governing body might be a little bit wary of, you know, too much too soon? Yeah. One, thank you for yeah. your all's grace and patience. Signing right back in helps sure. the audio issue for sure so okay, okay um so i'm glad i was able to hear that that last little part but um i definitely think i think we'll we'll probably always see like an ever-changing ebb and flow to the organization because um I, I agree with most of the panel that they're uh they're in reactive mode um crisis mode um maybe rule changes help with damage control um and and when when you have the constant excuse of new light um then you can really make it up as you go um mm -hmm. just as long as you keep everybody convinced that oh this is the way it's supposed to be like whether changes are biblical or not you get people talked you know you get them convinced that they're to expect new light and an ever-changing organization when if you can get away from the cognitive dissonance dissonance a little bit um you'll see it for what it really is which is is how i see it i see all of these rule changes as as reaction mode um or crisis mode it, it's make them happy keep them convinced keep the members in the doors 
because it's really not about the members. It's about the money. Mm. Yeah. I think they won't stop making changes to be more direct on this question. I think they won't stop until they stop whatever they think the problem is. So if they think mm. the problem is that they're losing members until that bleeding stops, then they're going to continue to react to it. Well, we've got a lot more changes the coming then. <laughs> yeah. If you said stop well, that may not be that may not be the issue. That may not be whatever they think the issue is. Yeah. But they're clearly they're triaging this. Because let's face like it, it's only in going in one tra in one trajectory, and and the the simple kind of underlying problem that they have, which they will always fail to recognize because they're deluded, is that their religion is not true. That's right. that's what the core problem is. So, yeah. um, you know, while that's the case, they will always hemorrhage members and they can think, hey, we'll give that we'll let them grow beards. Hey, we'll let the women wear pants, blah, blah, blah. It's it's, it's not going to make a difference because you're you're nowhere near addressing the core problem. You know? But clearly yeah. they were OK with the stagnant growth of the last 20 years because they didn't start to make these sort of. This is like a hospital. It's like an emergency room over here with the way they're triaging these these changes. And Were they, they okay they with it, this. or did they just use COVID as an excuse? <laughs> well, they weren't freaking out like this. They they yeah. they had you know negative growth against population growth as a as a share of the population for like twenty years, and they didn't lose their minds and start letting in pants and beards, you know, which is <laughs> which is a mind loss for anybody who understands the situation mm -hmm. well. Um, so I think whatever they think the issue is again, and we don't know what they think the issue is. It seems connected with membership loss because that's revenue. I'm sure they don't think of it that way, maybe only subconsciously. Mm. Mm -hmm. We've had another uh, super chat from At, At Larch. Uh, thank you very much, At Larch, who says, I did have the opportunity to ask my friend who became an elder for opinion. He said half of the organization members are joyfully embracing it. Beards are popular now. Well, we've seen so with Mark Santerson, as uh, I've seen some people <laughs> calling him rather hilariously. Um, and, <laughs> I'm going to have to use that in future rebuttals. Aren't That's I? a good one. Um, yeah, and and, and others groan with anger. And then he says at the end, schism. And piggybacking on that, um, we have longtime supporter of the channel, Yumari Iniestra, with another super chat saying, will this cause a splinter group? Good to be here with you guys, by the way. You know, this is something that I, I know, Sherry, um, you and I, and, and Jonathan, and I, I think Chaka as well, you know, we, we've, yeah, we had a, we've, we've we had, had a, a conversation about, about this behind <laughs> behind the scenes. Um, mm -hmm. I'm personally very, very skeptical that anything that, you know, su substantive enough to be called a schism w will result from this. But I, I know that um, this view isn't necessarily shared by everybody. And, and also... Um, Jonathan, there's been a little bit of a, a development on Reddit. Maybe you can fill us in. Yeah, there there was a, a Reddit post that gained a lot of traction. Um, I should have had the name ready, but basically, mm. a congregation is was at least refusing to go along with the direction and not announce the letter from the platform and basically just being a stick in the mud about trying to stick with it. And we, I, when we talked about this a couple weeks ago, uh, I know we were all confident that the, the secret of Steer is going to come into town. He's going to bust them up. That's what mm -hmm. he was going to do because that's what the, that's how the organization operates. This is far from the first congregation that hasn't liked direction. So I'm, I'm sure they're used to this, but to, to go with the question with the schism briefly, um, I think when we had that discussion, I was the one who was most, in favor of some kind of schism, though mm. I don't think this will be enough. I think if they keep doing changes, maybe. But I agree with you in this that it won't be substantive. Mm. You'll. It, I would be surprised if you lost if you if you had a ten percent reduction in in membership yeah. through a schism. That would be high. That would be really high. Yeah, it needs to be of a significant percentage. For you got to go after. Yeah, it's got to be more serious than this too. It has to be something yeah. like if they change blood or if they got rid of this fellowshipping altogether, some major change where you're dealing with something that you've told the members are is scriptural, and then you're changing that. If if you get enough people who respect the Bible enough to say no, this is like here's another one that comes to mind: uh, anointed people. If they 
eliminate their understanding of the 144,000, that might lead to a schism. But again, even then, 10% maybe. Hmm. Sherry, Shaka, uh, what are your thoughts? Um, I think, yeah, the, the, the difficulty you have is, I was just thinking about this, they, they, Jehovah's Witnesses are actually so conservative, their minds are so conservative, but actually when you think about these changes, for example, which the, the changes around shunning the beards, the, um, the pants, and so on, these are, you could say these are, they're small steps, but they're steps in, the posit in a positive direction. But to actually hear that there is resistance to this just kind of shows you the mindset that Jehovah's Witnesses have on the ground, where they actually don't see any evil, so to speak, with, with the organization if they are opposing changes that are, you could say, positive. Um, with regards to there being any sort of major kind of um, movement, like opposition towards the governing body, I think what what you would need to happen would would be a situation where they actually depose this governing body where they said um we don't accept this governing body and the, and this was kind of like a, a, a i don't know worldwide movement where they, they pushed the current governing body out and replaced them but the difficulty you would have with that is would you then be going backwards would they then re be reintroducing these harsh policies that actually exist at the moment so uh, like I, I personally don't see it getting to a point of there being like any sort of significant schism but i think there will be people that will oppose just like during the covid pandemic there were elders that were opposed to uh, this kind of um push for vaccination and so on there were elders that were refusing to to comply, to read the letters and so on. But because it was such a mass resistance, they couldn't just then delete those elders. They, what they did is they were sending secular overseers to talk sense into the elders. But if it's just the one congregation, which it seems to be with that example of Reddit, then they can just they could just dissolve the body of elders, bring in new elders. Um, so yeah, but I, I just don't see at the moment potential for yeah. any significant schism. Yeah. I, I agree. I I would say it would, if if your sales pitch this whole time has been that you're the only true religion over all other religions or groups or ideas, you know, around your certain country or world, then it it would be I would think it would be even a, a harder sales pitch for that separate group to then somehow try to try to prove that, oh, no, no, like well, we were part of the new religion and then things change or we're, we're part of the only true religion and then things change. So we made this other one. And now this one is for sure. Like, I just, I don't ever see something like that happening. I see it staying kind of one entity, as you've said, Lloyd. Hmm. Uh, a few more comments. Um, Ginger Girl says desperation is a bad cologne. Uh, <laughs> I think I think we can all agree there's there's a lot of desperation in the air right now that's a good um, one um, <laughs> reminds me of the anchorman scene uh, any talk of cologne uh hello from california these changes have been coming full force since they got rid of tony morris it's almost like he was the one holding them back you know you do wonder <laughs> don't you whether he is just absolutely apoplectic at what's going on uh since he was removed He's he's got to be spinning in whatever grave they put him in, like uh, well, he, not a grave, but maybe like well, a maybe like the a grave um, of a, a congregation a in North Carolina, maybe a crater of Macallan's bottles, let's say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, actually, to that point though, I really like uh, Chaka's explaining that a schism might come through an almost Operation Valkyrie sort of situation. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what I mean, Operation Valkyrie was a uh, plot by german officers to assassinate hitler with a bomb uh so an internal sort of takeover like a coup basically um the I, that may have been what happened with tony is they brought in two fresh governing body members and kicked him out like th this the operation valkyrie may already be over and the whole mm. thing's been taken over but where the schism might come in is people coming to that conclusion but not wanting to get rid of the beliefs so they come to the conclusion and they say the governing body's been corrupted. They've been taken over by Winder and Sanderson and the other one, Flegel. And 
these guys, they got rid of Tony. He was appointed by Holy Spirit and he should only be removed by Holy Spirit. And so therefore, honestly, if you see Tony get up, that he might take some people with him. Not to, not to get too conspiratorial, but um, I, I'm guessing they're not McAllen's bottles anymore. They're probably... He's probably had to reduce the the standard mm. of whiskey that he's drinking. The budget but now that he's uh, had yeah, a budget in, reduction. In his position. But hey, you know the offer's there, Tony. Uh, if you ever feel like coming on the channel, I'm happy to let bygones be bygones, <laughs> and we can just have a conversation. What could possibly go wrong? Um, I wear my loosest pants. Oh, yes, I, I oh, promise forgiven. to wear all clothing, non figure hugging. If that's going to you know, be a, a deal breaker for you. Uh, Glenn Edwards says they may have made changes to inviting the disfellowship people to the memorial, but my parents, which are Jehovah's Witnesses, have yet to invite me because, quote, I'm dead to them. I think that, you know, and this is something I discussed in my response video, you know, again, what we have here is two-tier shunning. So, so now there are slightly different rules depending on whether you are a, quote-unquote, known apostate and i guess the extent to which you're going to get reached out to is going to vary wildly depending on the perception of you as an apostate or not as an apostate locally you know is, is that fair have i have i read things properly that, yeah, that, that is entirely accurate and uh the the thing is as well is um when they appeal this i don't know how transparent they're going to be with the Norwegian government during the appeal process, because what they've done essentially is they've actually hardened their stance towards um, apostates, people that they label as apostates. So if you're an apostate, you're not welcome to the Kingdom Hall. You don't get the invitation to the memorial or to anything. You're not greeted when you turn up at the meetings. And even if you're a child, if you're a minor and you uh labeled as an apostate you don't get any of those privileges so essentially what you could have is a situation where um you could have a hypothetical situation where a a minor child is sexually abused in the congregation there are no two witnesses the child is not believed and maybe this individual that abused them is, is an elder a ministry or servant and this child then sees that person on the platform and the child decides that they're not gonna go to the meetings anymore and they start speaking out against the organization and this child then starts to be shunned completely to the extent that they're not even invited they're not even welcome to to anything that has to do with jehovah's witnesses so this is actually a worsening of the, their policies in terms of their attitude to, towards who people who oppose the religion and and the fact of the matter is anyway this is just my opinion but they the majority of the people who are worst affected by the shunning are people who no longer acknowledge the governing body and the authority those are the people that the, the, the people who've just been disfellowshipped and they still believe is the true religion they they're trying to go back so the shunning is not as bad and it's temporary but if you've decided this is no longer the true religion then for you it's permanent and in that case they haven't really addressed um that uh, that situation there so it's it's actually quite surprising that knowing that this, these are the concerns that the Norwegian government has raised. They haven't even tried to address that uh, at all. I'm, I'm not sure it would even be relevant to the uh, appeal because they the, the appeal would be based on trying to check the judgment of the court in Oslo. I don't think they're going to hear new evidence toward the idea that, hey, maybe Jehovah's Witnesses are shunning. They're better. They're better now. It's all fine. Um, something else that came to mind too, but lost it in the noggin. Okay, <laughs> I, I've I've been there. I've been there. Yeah, <laughs> many many live streams. It'll pop veteran. up right. Yeah, so I've been there. Um, we do. Uh, I'll I'll just uh, go through some more of the comments. Um, Clearview Photo says, "Any ex JW just recent have family reach out, and if so, who? My dad, elder, just reached out to me." Again, I think that's probably because you don't have a reputation as an apostate mm. and therefore they, they see you as quote unquote safe, um, someone who they can um, shun slightly less, uh, <laughs> but only very slightly less. Um, that was a common story. Yeah. People were showing up to the Reddit around the time of the memorial saying, uh, which just just happened a few days ago, uh, mm. but basically saying, darn it, I missed uh, it. Uh, really yeah, again this year. Ah. This year. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, but they're saying they're saying that hey, my aunt, my whatever is contacting me. What's going on? Like this is a very common thing. But again, it's also people who are not very active on the Reddit. So hmm. not people who are the hardened apostates just showing up because they know they can get information and they're asking the question, uh, did something happen? Because my parents are talking to me all of a sudden. Which speaks to the fact that there has been a fallout because, you know, let's remember the disfellowshipping and shunning process is very traumatic for people. And any kind of disruption of this kind, where you have out of the blue people starting to ask specific questions about can you come to the memorial, um, mm -hmm. is going to be unsettling for people mm -hmm. and, dare I say, in some cases, traumatic for people. Very so bad. so it, it's almost like the, the, the governing body set off this explosion and, you know, only only like a few days or even weeks later were some people feeling the, the aftershock from it. Um, that's the nature I agree of, with you, Lloyd. Yeah, yeah, I think it could be traumatic for the people who do get reached out to. Then it's re-traumatizing for the people who don't get reached out to. Believe me, mm. my nothing has changed on my end. My, my parents live 15 minutes away from me. Uh, they have constant contact with my 16-year-old daughter. And no one has texted or called me or uh, my daughter somewhat said there was like a halfway invite that came through her to me for the assembly. But oh, then hang she on. also hang on, a halfway said, invite. What's that? <laughs> yeah. You can come halfway to the memorial. Uh, yeah, I wasn't invited not. to the memorial, but my daughter was invited to the assembly and said that my mom sort of invited me to. But then my daughter goes, I think grandma had some wine because she was kind of slurring her speech too. So oh we don't really oh know if my mom meant the invitation or not, or if it was under, she you was know, the same, the same spirit of, guidance that Tony Moore is. Yeah. 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 Okay. So but, I'm not really, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to count it. So I can go ahead and say like, I don't think I've gotten any invites. I've gotten contacted by nobody and I haven't had the chance to run into anybody in public to see like if it would be approachable, but I mean, you can you can Google my full name and see my interview with Lloyd. So you know the cat's out of the bag. So I'm, pro I'm probably not getting any advice. That ship has sailed. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Grandma was pre gaming for the memorial. Oh, <laughs> or you know, to be she to was be fair, how would you... from the memorial? I think she was still partying. How from the would memorial. you sit through it unless you hadn't done a Tony Morris? Because to to be fair, <laughs> it's one of the most dull things you could possibly sit through. Just this weird <laughs> ritual. Of of passing yeah. random food items around a room, um, and and on mass rejecting the the emblems is essentially yeah. all it is. Yeah. It's it's crazy. it's the yeah. strangest thing. And and what they do, I was just looking through the the outline that um, they use for the memorial. Is they actually like they, they so they get this phrase where they say, um, Jesus said. Um, only those who are born again should partake of the emblems. And then they, they quote this scripture, John 3, verses 5 to 8. And then I, I open the scripture, and it's, Jesus is actually saying the opposite. He's saying, unless you're born again, you can't enter the kingdom of God. So the, 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 right. the, the outline says a sentence, puts a scripture in brackets, that's saying the exact opposite of what the outline is saying. So it's just like totally contrary to, so if you're a Christian, uh, and you got, I just don't see any reason why you'd go to this thing that is just do it, telling you to do the exact opposite of what the Bible is telling you to do. Hmm. What, when I was first waking up and still trying to be a Christian, but not a Jehovah's Witness, that was one, um, that was a major issue for me is they've somehow convinced everybody to not accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ in their name by rejecting the emblems. Uh, it's, um, Mm. fascinating the way that mine can get twisted specifically says in the bible to, to do take it the um, do it drink it drink yeah the, yeah you know and and like um, when you read christ as a conscience his big thing one of ray franz's big things was there's no such thing as a non-anointed christian and that mm. just made so much sense to me the bible does mm -hmm. not even though at this point i don't believe in that all of it but the bible does not support the idea of a non-anointed christian the term christian mm. means anointed one yeah it was exactly. the invention of Rutherford, really, the, uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, this different class of, of Christian. Um, Christopher Legros says, hello to the three of you. 
I'd like to know how many Jehovah's Witnesses are deep down a cognitive dissonance, or I guess having cognitive dissonance. It must be horrible to feel like that all the time. To be honest, I think everybody has has cognitive dissonance. It has a it serves a very um, primal function. We we all need it to some extent to guard our sense of self. Our sense of self is connected with our beliefs and our worldview. And if if it if our beliefs and worldview were so pliable that we could just change our minds instantly the moment someone shows us a piece of information, then you know we'd be on very shaky ground uh, mentally. Um, but f for sure, um, groups like Jehovah's Witnesses rely on this human instinct and indeed exploit it so that you can have, you know, large numbers of people uh, wrestling essentially with completely competing ideas in their brains, uh, knowing I on some level that it's nonsense, but on another level, believing it has to be true. I mean, growing up as a Jehovah's Witness, my interactions with a lot of people, and maybe you guys will feel the same, the vast majority of Jehovah's Witnesses have shut their brain off, brains off long ago because it's it's probably because it was so uncomfortable to have your brain switched on that they just don't want it on anymore and they're just, <laughs> they're just taking whatever they're fed. I only, in my opinion, I can only think of maybe 10 or 15% of the fringes of the organization that are actually people who are intellectually processing this. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, and I don't uh, think they need it either, Jonathan. I mean, if the world's going to end tomorrow and we're all going to walk into a paradise and everything, all our problems will be solved and everything will be fine. Then what do we need to work so hard today for? Right. Yeah. They don't need it. They yeah. don't, they don't need free thinking. If the answer is amazing to me already right there. How long that... Yeah. Sorry. Sure. It's amazing to me how long that trick has worked. They've, yeah. they've been playing that game for over a hundred years and it still works. It's weird. It's so, so there, there, there was somebody that, um, and it, it, they were in a congregation and they, they were kind of sort of on the fringes and i i was kind of involved when i was an elder and it's kind of trying to readjust this individual so when they had heard that i'd left the the religion they were like oh so what's up um why have you left i said well uh, I've, I've done a video i've done some interviews so have a look and then if you have any questions come back and then this person came and literally gave me a telling off and said essentially um you're a loser you shouldn't have your wife um how can you no longer believe in the and how can you do this when the end is so near when this person was actually agreeing with me saying yeah i, I agree that the governing body actually wrong on a lot of things like, you, how can you leave the organization when the end is so near so so yes lots of people buy into that yep uh Sorry, um, I'll just move on through the comments unless anyone else wants to cut in. Um, well, I was also thinking that maybe being a Jehovah's Witness long term is like a big filter as well. So if your cognitive abilities are switched on, you fall out. Hmm. And if they're not switched on, you end up staying. So that's why there's so few. But anyway, can, look, can I just add a, a bit on that? Um, so I, I, I also have a friend who he definitely he doesn't respect half of the governing body. He doesn't respect Sanderson at all. He's he's an elder. And we used to have these conversations before I left and just talking about all these changes and all this madness and how it was all scriptural. And the, the moment I told him I was leaving, <laughs> he didn't even respond to me. And this is somebody I've grown up with. Like uh, we went to the same school, we went, um, we left our home country together when we both got scholarships and we just have such a long history. And he has serious misgivings with the religion. But when I said I'm leaving, he just, he couldn't stomach that at all. That's how strong the- I don't Yeah, know, that's the cognitive, cognitive dissonance. Is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it basically, he, he, does, he does know on some level that it's not mm -hmm. true, but Mm -hmm. um the, the human mind is such a complicated thing and uh sometimes you can just stay in it because you need it to be true mm -hmm. um rick blozer says the governing who looks suspiciously like jesus by the way um <laughs> the governing body brought it so maybe it's jesus maybe jesus is oh, now known as rick yeah. it rick might be blozer. yeah um, the governing Jesus. <laughs> the governing body brought in two new members so they could vote out Tony Morris. It was a move Rutherford would be proud of. I, I mean, we can't prove it. We can't yeah. prove it. But if I were a betting man, that's exactly what happened. Uh, I think I might have even alluded to this in past videos because the the timing was was so um, odd. The fact that 
you had these two guys, uh, Gage Flegel and Jeffrey Winder, appointed, and then a matter of weeks later, Tony Morris is gone. So it's almost as though, and I, I can't prove it, maybe one day we'll have confirmation, maybe there'll be a high-profile defection and we'll, all of this will come out. But um, it's I, I think Sanderson is the one pulling the strings. I think it's more than likely in my mind that Sanderson headhunted Gage Flegel and Jeffrey Winder um, because they were, were of like mind and and more more urgently because he knew he could rely on them to break to give him a majority in voting out Tony Morris. I think that's supported by the I, idea that they came from nowhere. They came yeah, from they, nowhere. They weren't they didn't work They're through the buddies. ranks like I mean David Schaefer uh, and Mark Newman yeah. would have been like what you know where, where are these guys come from you know um so yeah i think it's very suspicious shall we say um Al at large says i did have the opportunity to ask my friend who became an elder for opinion he said half of the organization members are joyfully embracing it bids are popular now and others groan with anger oh dear um, I'm trying to imagine what the groaning will sound like in your average kingdom hall, but um, it'll sound very old. <laughs> yeah, because... There'll be old, there will be old groans, a bit like uh, the grandpa on The Simpsons. There'll be those types of groans, probably. Um, yeah. Sarah, thank you for your super chat. Do you think the changes will retain younger Jehovah's Witnesses? That's a good, a good question for the panel. Ooh. I think they're intended to. Mm. Yeah. Um, whether that will work depends. I, I'm not even sure if this religion can exist with this much internet existing at the same time. Yep. So that might be a, a different question. But basically, it it seems to me that the types of changes they're doing are clearly intended to retain and generate, reactivate new or old members. Uh, I was actually that's kind of what I was thinking about when we were talking earlier about. The, the reason why they are intentionally leaving off apostates is because they know that they're a lost cause. So they're just mm. going after people who they're making it easier to reactivate witnesses who have been out for a long time, but are still mentally indoctrinated. Right. Yeah, I, th I think that's a good point. I think when you look at the, the governing body update number two, the letter that was sent to elders, it's clear that they're, it's almost like they've given up on and not only the apostates, but also the, the idea of people coming into the religion, people um, just coming they're from giving the up territory. On yeah, yeah, they're giving up yeah. on preaching. Uh, because because I think the, the idea is, that, anyway, this is just my speculation, but I think there is there's probably a discussion on some level with, on, with the governing body where they're saying, if we let people get this fellowship and they're out for a year, 18 months, two years, it's very easy for them to be reached by apostates and at that stage they will be a lost cause and we can't have them back so why don't why not make it so that it's very difficult for them to be disfellowshipped in the first place or if they do get disfellowshipped let's make it as easy as possible for them to come back so that there is no chance for them to for their minds to be infected by the apostates i think that's kind of the strategy they're employing at the moment yep. Yeah. To be honest with you, they've almost made it, and we'll have to see how this shakes out, but they've almost made it that you need to be an apostate in order to be disfellowshipped because they're just going to keep throwing you bones. They're going to keep throwing you chances yeah. and meetings, right? They're going to keep having meetings with you, and as long as you're making progress, the direction seems to be that they don't want to disfellowship you. I, I guess yeah. overall my answer, Sarah, would be uh, yes, in insofar as um, you know the generation – that I think this panel represents is used to a an environment whereby um, if you committed a gross sin, you know you had at best a fifty fifty chance, even if you said sorry, um, that you would be disfellowshipped because they would be looking or the judicial committee would be looking for grounds for repentance. They would be looking for something beyond your your words. And you know, reading between the lines at these in, with these new changes, it just seems like they're going to be making things especially easy for younger people, to the point where they're just going to be meeting with two elders with with the parents when a gross sin, a gross sin has been committed, um, and it sounds like just a sorry is going to be enough. And mm -hmm. and and to that extent, yes, I do think that more witnesses will be retained but 
it remains to be seen whether that's going to be enough retention to offset the amount of people who are going to be looking at all these changes and saying this is an organization that doesn't have a clue what it's doing and certainly isn't mm -hmm. being yep. directed by God. So um, yep. what name says, do any of you think the organization will end in our lifetime or become mm -hmm. splintered over time? Here's yes. hoping. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, sister. And, and uh, sister Sherry raised her hand. Um, <laughs> oh, no, no, you, you crossed your fingers. Okay. I crossed fingers my fingers. Crossed. I was like, here's hoping is, that it, is that, it falls I, I, I apart. I think that might be uh, a counseling thing. I'm not sure. Oh, whether, am I not supposed to do that? Your fingers well, then is... I also wish all of you good luck and all of the other <laughs> tabloid things we're not supposed to say. Are you going to toast this as well? Oh, <laughs> is she dear. repentant? Is Cheers. she repentant? Oh, no. Absolutely not, Jonathan. I haven't been repentant in years. I try not to do that anymore. Oh, the, the problem, but... the difficulty you have with this um, religion is that, um, as we we're saying, the members don't switch on their brains because, realistically speaking, this organization should not survive the death of, I think, Sanderson. Because they, they, they were very, when David Splane came out with his whiteboard, with his generation and overlapping generation, um, they were very, you know, <laughs> unequivocal on the fact that this, the, their generation, that generation of that governing body should not pass away until until this end has, the end of the system has arrived. And when we were at SKE, I think, I don't think you had this, but you, you had lectures, video lectures by governing body members. And one of the lectures was David Splain. He did this lecture called Who Really Is the Faith When Discreet Slave? And in the lecture, he says, well, um, somebody might argue and say, well, in years to come, this governing body will all be gone and they'll be replaced by a new governing body. So this doctrine does not stand. And he just said, he was just like, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. And he opened the scripture again and said, because Jesus said, this generation will not pass away until these things happen. So the, <laughs> the end for this religion should be when Sanderson dies. But there will be Jehovah's Witnesses that will buy whatever excuse they come up for their new new light on the generation teaching. Mm. I mean, they've survived about five or six death of Sanderson events mm. already. Um, it's, my answer to the question is, and I think this is also Chaka is saying, it's not going to, no, it won't no. end in our lifetime. No. Not, not in my lifetime, it, but it might continue to peter out. It might go the way of the Quakers or SDA where it's entirely an internal religion. In fact, it's already kind of already. It's, it's just babies. Basically yeah. your, your re retention policy is make babies and indoctrinate the babies. And that can only, because then you get children falling out like myself, as an example, yeah. you know, falling out of the religion. And that's, that's a spiral. It's a spiral mm -hmm. down, but it's not a, it's not a, explosion it's not a complete loss wonderful yeah. to see 500 on the live stream uh, or tuning in to the live Amazing. stream by the way that's that's really nice to see and uh, we're, we're very grateful to you all for giving up part of your easter weekend uh to to be with us as we discuss this i i think you know my personal take and i've said this before is that you know when it comes to religions they're very hard things to kill uh, because you're dealing with ideas. Uh, you, you don't just persuade yeah. people to stop having ideas. Um, and I think that regardless of what happens to Watchtower, to the organization, to the governing body, uh, centuries from now, there will still be people who associate as Jehovah's Witnesses. The question for me is not whether there will still be Jehovah's Witnesses. It's a question of to what extent will they be able to inflict damage on people's lives? And if, if governments did what they're supposed to be doing um, and followed the example of, of Norway, um, then we, we would be seeing, uh, it, it's more plausible that we would get an, like an event akin to the end of Return of the Jedi where we could have some cause for like global celebration that, you know, the, 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 the serpent has been defanged at least. Mm -hmm. It's still there, but mm -hmm. at least it can't inflict as much damage. Will that happen in our lifetime? Personally, I don't think I'm going to see it. I'd love to be surprised. Um, what is the, that? 
what is that? What, sorry. Can you... What what and um, what I'm so, what what do you think is that defanging? Uh, defanging is is where the organization is so uh, censored by governments and uh, the leadership, for example, is held accountable. So we'd need to see the governing body um, put in prison. Um, we'd need to see the organization humbled to the point where it needs to reverse all of its most dangerous policies. That would be a defanging for me. And I, I don't think I'm going to live to see that. But the, the way my mind works and I, the way I think activism works is is that we're all as activists standing on the shoulder of giants. So Ray Franz probably knew he was never going to see effective change in his lifetime, and he didn't. And so what needs to happen is that, um, you know, we, we need new generations of activists to basically to take the baton and, and keep running. And then maybe some future generation will get to yeah. see this sunset um, where where the, the organisations is 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 robbed of its ability to inflict harm on the scale that it's doing if that yeah. makes sense makes yeah sense. and that was kind Side of that quest. was kind of my thought as well yeah yeah is again i don't think i don't think we're going to be able to see the end of it there's always going to be new excuses new light um there's always going to be something you know in in reaction mode or crisis mode but the good news is they probably will will, will never run out of things to do live streams and, and talk about so <laughs> <laughs> lloyd will forever have a job <laughs> oh i really hope not Shall he's we, like, I really, oh, really hope not you've just induced some trauma in me there so, um, side question do, do, do any of you think the governing body might at some point just cut their losses and run off to Panama or one of the tax havens. No, no, they, they open, like the power. I wish they would. They like oh, the power. No. They like the respect. Yep. They like the power. They run to Panama, they lose it. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, they're going to be in our faces for a while, unfortunately. Uh, Pix61 yep. says, I personally think the governing body have advanced warning from court papers that many more EU countries are taking them to court. And with the result from Norway, they feel they have to make big changes. I mean, we can't corroborate that. Uh, I, I think this is speculation. But, you know, you make a good point. Maybe the governing body knows something that we don't. They've been heard. Sure. The, the thing is, yeah, the, the, I, I, I think the thing yeah. is, Norway is a serious country. So they mm. can't make the excuse they made when they have cause, beautiful cause fjords. Even, yeah, because even with Russia, they were the Russian government had serious. I mean, we, we, we don't open praise the Russian government, but there were things that the Russian government that were concerned about, which were legitimate. But because Russia is known to be a totalitarian Mr. state, yeah, totalitarian yeah. state, nobody could respect the yeah. decision that's been made by Russia. But you can't say the same with Norway, mm. and this is yeah. this is, I guess, one of the reasons why they're even appealing it because they can't be seen to lose the respect of such a serious country. And if that's, they let that just slide, then other countries might follow suit. So who knows? They've made a big deal in the past about their um, their wins at the ECHR. And losing in Norway, if this continues to appeal, it could lead to losses in the, in the European Court of Human Rights in the future. And I think that that concerns them deeply. Also, mm -hmm. a, a moose once bit my sister. What did you just say there about your sister? Oh, sorry. Uh, you were making a Monty Python reference earlier about the field. Oh, the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, no, really. A moose once bit my sister. <laughs> uh, the, the Norwegian blue. Uh, Savannah Moon says, my daughter, son-in-law and granddaughter loved the recent changes. Didn't ring the bell at all. So they're, cl they're clearly viewing you as a known apostate, Savannah. Um but it sounds like I, I, I can imagine you're you're not drowning in tears, but some people will be. Um, it's it's a messed up situation. Uh, Drench says there will be a schism because a lot of Pimos are walking, waking up, so a lot will leave. I think that's different from a schism, though. I, I think hemorrhaging members is not the same as what's mm -hmm. happened in the past, where you had uh, well the the biggest schism in the organization's history was when the Bible students, or, or as we otherwise might refer to them, Russellites, split from the organization that came to be known as Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, 
and and really that was kind of an unfair contact contest because the followers of Rutherford kept the Watchtower uh, magazine and the Watchtower Bible Tract Society of Pennsylvania and, and having those things meant that they were always going to be the bigger fish. Um, but uh, I, I think people simply leaving, we can't count that as a schism, unfortunately. Because they, they just spin off in a whole bunch of different directions because they've just yeah. discovered that they're allowed to have their own opinions yeah. and then have them. Uh, I think a schism would require alternative leadership to maintain yeah. a group and remove a group as a chunk. An another example of something approaching a schism is what happened in Romania. Um, yeah. I think, I've, I think we've discussed that on the channel. Maybe I've talked to Arthur about it. Uh, but they had a breakaway group, uh, a Jehovah's Witness breakaway group that even held their own conventions and assemblies um, for a while. And I think there's um, a testimonial from Garrett Loesch where he describes being sent in to help deal with that and, and meeting with them and basically getting them, getting them to come back to the fold, essentially. That's a schism. Um, yeah. And that's an interesting one because they don't tell the whole story on the Garrett Lush thing because I was talking to Arthur about it and he says there they, they are still groups that yeah. claim to be Jehovah's Witnesses apart from the organization in Romania. So not everybody came back, although that's yeah. the story. <laughs> Garrett Lush fed everyone. <laughs> this, this, this happens with groups too. Like um, the Mormons had a thing maybe 15 years ago where an area president in Sweden who was a, like a like a district over like a zone overseer basically but when they used to have those um started to wake up and he he put together a large group of people in sweden and they had to send major church leaders over there to do what they refer to now as the swedish rescue where they rescued the swedish church from splitting off but it was it was close so i think mm -hmm. the age of the internet is leading to that but again it took that area president of mormonism to rally the people around that there has to be a figure that they're following. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Hmm. So we have as well a comment from, I'm trying to keep or keep things nice and orderly. So that was Drench. We have Melinda, again, saying, every religion says they're the one true religion. When a schism happens, the people that leave will believe they are totally justified and right. Yeah, that mm. no one's ever going to um, join a group and think, well, maybe this is true. Uh, they're always going to be completely convinced. Man, um, these guys are terrible. Let's, yeah. <laughs> Let's join anyway, just to see. What yeah, happens. you know, I, I, like, um, I like the club. <laughs> what's the worst that could happen? Uh, yeah. At Larch says, do you think Jehovah's Witnesses might end up just as much reformed as Seventh-day Adventist Church did? They changed to more Protestant even though they used to be similar to Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, I, I guess all bets are off when it comes to how how many changes they will make. Um, again, I'm personally convinced that as long as the governing body model exists um, th and they are uh, almost immune from um, governmental scrutiny, uh, the organization will be abusive. Um, but for sure, you know, don't write off the possibility that they end up making so many changes that it's almost almost a, like 180. Um, who knows? We'll have to see. <laughs> um, what name? Uh, clearly someone who hasn't decided on what to call themselves. Um, thank you for your super chat, by the way. Do you think the organization will end in our lifetimes? Maybe I think we've discussed that already. Uh, but thank you so much for your uh, super chat. That's very kind. Uh, Beauty Rest says, just came home from the meeting. I'm physically and mentally out. Lots of beards. <laughs> I saw a few sisters with pants, but not many. The, the majority still wear skirts or dresses. Here's the thing. I think that, uh, and I think Jonathan and, and I were talking about this a little bit because, Jonathan, you said that there's no way you would turn up at the Kingdom Hall without a tie. I, I would um, be uncomfortable without a tie, yeah. I, yeah, I, th I think that the majority will will just be wary of... Um, they'll want to err on the side of caution, you know? Even if they see governing body members with beards, they'll be like, I'd really like a beard, but you know what? I, I, I've gone this many years without one. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to hold off a little bit and wait and wait for there to be a little bit more water under the bridge, because if there mm -hmm. is a a further U-turn on this, 
I, you know, I get to be on the side that says, well, you know, I didn't make those changes. Mm -hmm. And I, I can see that being the case with, with women and pants as well. Absolutely. I can see, I can see there being many women who will, who will consider this almost a test of, of their loyalty to the organization. Yep. And it's like, even, even though I now have this freedom, it's like, um, Stephen Lett said this in a, in a recent convention, um, or maybe it was an annual meeting. It was along the lines of just because you have the right to do something doesn't mean you should do something. Mm -hmm. So yeah. lots of, you know, millions of Jehovah's Witnesses have just been given the right to do certain stuff. Many of yep. them will cling to this ideology of let's just hang back a little bit and see how this plays out. Would that be fair? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, 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 of... I want to agree with that 100 percent, 100 percent, Lloyd, because mm. like mm. I, I probably would have done the same thing. I would not have put a pair of pants on a pair of slacks and went to the meeting right at first. I'm like, give it time. But old habits die hard. When I first came out of the religion and and would even like on special occasions go to other churches with with some of my worldly family members it felt weird going in jeans or pants to even other religious places because i had been so indoctrinated to wear a skirt for for so many years yeah it it really makes me think about the uh the Israelites in the wilderness and yeah, probably seemed pretty innocent to, to dance around that golden calf. And then it didn't work out for everybody. <laughs> Good. So uh, I bet a you, lot you of get people a G are... for illustration as well, Sherry. Well done. Uh, Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Elder Evans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Appreciate it. Main points made to stand out. Excellent. Yeah. So I, I I mean, we're like hey, dancing around this little statue. Who's gonna... And then everybody's deployed. So that's probably what I would have thought. I'm like, Oh yeah. man, the second I wear a pair of slacks to the Kingdom Hall, that's the day Armageddon's coming. Poof, we're all gone. Yeah, so I'd and probably still be with and me. Conversely, the situation with um, with with men and ties, um, you know, thinking back to you know when I was an elder, um, it, even if you didn't have a part on the meeting, you you, you when you went to the meeting, um, Chaka will know about this because he's recently been an elder when you go to the meeting you're always in the back of your mind thinking just be just in case they they ask me to do an item i'm going to be ready to get on the platform and give whatever item they ask me to do and yeah. how can you possibly do that if you show up at the i mean you could technically Ooh. i suppose carry a, a a tie in your jacket pocket but that would look a bit weird yeah. suddenly putting a tie on when you've committed to, to going just with the shirt so, isn't, the, uh, isn't it the same with sisters like they they can't wear slacks if they have a part on the but, meeting so what am i supposed to do carry be... a carry a skirt in my book bag from now <laughs> but but to be fair women are and you know this is wrong of course but women are going to be less likely to be kind of ad hoc called upon to to jump on the platform and do true. an item i would, I would yeah. suggest true. Than, than men. yeah, yeah. But, but yeah but this let's is, not forget this about is that a, Mm -hmm. yeah. But this again speaks to how arbitrary these rules are. So yeah. again, as you're saying, so there could be a situation where you turn up at the meetings, you you don't have a part, you don't you're not appropriately dressed, and then you're required to handle a part. So they haven't thought that aspect through. And why mm -hmm. is there this, why is there a rule of because they're rushing? Uh, if, you, <laughs> if you don't have a part, you can come dressed like this. If you don't, if you have a part, you have to dress like what what are they basing those rules on? It's just really arbitrary. But the other thing I just wanted to say as well is that there'll be a lot of judgment. Um, you know how judgmental this religion is. There'll be a lot of judgment on sisters that turn up with um with pants, the meetings, people that turn up without a tie. Um, there'll be a lot of talk. So because people actually count, people are counting now physically how many people turned up, how many sisters turned up wearing pants so so that there's a lot of um what's the pant speaking. count tonight yeah exactly. it's just so yeah but again I, it I go, this... goes back to the cologne of desperation doesn't it mm. i think yeah yeah yes. i think it leads yeah. to a larger point though that they're 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 robbing peter to pay paul a little bit or kind of burning the gasoline that they have but they're going to run out of fuel on this you've already got a g on illustrations Jonathan. sorry sorry sorry, you're, you're sorry. Just going, yeah. I, it's part of my it's part of quit me. quit I while can't. you're ahead you I, know? I need to have that game <laughs> what i'm trying to say i'll say it more directly what i'm trying to say <laughs> is i think that they are sacrificing 
they're trying to stabilize, they're trying to stop the bleeding, but they're sacrificing the things that keep people in the religion long term. It's been well established through studies that the more conservative conservative a religion is you maintain a hardcore base in the center and taking away things like like i'll give an example when i started to go back to the meetings briefly after the pandemic i began to notice the ritual of putting on the tie that's why it makes me uncomfortable to think to go to, without it because it is it is part of putting on the uniform of being a jehovah's witness and those kinds of rituals are super important to creating a culture and when you're just yep. going not like that when you're for instance even losing service was an important mm -hmm. maintain maintenance of the culture of being a jehovah's witness and when you cut these things out yeah you'll retain members in the short term but in the long term you you'll start to lose them because they just don't feel connected to the religion anymore yep. i love that point jonathan because yeah that makes me think about sisters and slacks like how how our witness is now set apart from the rest of the world if they look like all the other ladies that go to church on Sundays. So, yeah. And from, you know, I, I sent you guys a picture a couple of days ago when I passed a cart that, and I saw a, a scruffy gentleman mm -hmm. by the cart. And it's like, as an outsider, why would I go over there to talk to this maintenance guy, you know, <laughs> who looks like he's just come off of his job and he forgot to shave. Like, I don't, I think actually it was more attractive to have them well dressed before. Yeah, yeah, that's been the problem I've yeah. had throughout the many years of doing my channel. People just don't listen to me because I'm scruffy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I listen to you, boy. <laughs> oh, thank you, World, thank worldly you, boy. At least Chaka listens to me. <laughs> uh, Ginger Girl says I really liked Lloyd's thought last week when he said the organization missed a golden opportunity to be compassionate and merciful in regard to disfellowshipping. Yeah. Uh, that's, I think, one of the most infuriating things for me is that uh, the, the the thing with it being a missed opportunity is that um, it would look even more weird if they made the correct reforms to shunning just a few weeks or a few months later. So, in other words, if you're going to do it, you do it, you get it right first time. And and the yeah. fact that they have missed this opportunity means that it it could be decades before they actually implement the reforms that we're all looking forward to. And that, that's why I'm annoyed from that point of view. I think there's going to be some letters, though. I think that a lot of congregations mm -hmm. are going to struggle to implement this the way that they intended mm -hmm. it because the announcement was so, frankly, unclear mm -hmm. about exactly what they want. I think that there'll be follow-up direction, and they might tweak the direction a little bit to make it to the point. Like, for instance, if it is their intention that almost no one gets this fellowship now, they'll need to say that, mm -hmm. and they'll need to say that through letters. Or they yeah, could do it through the Kingdom Ministry School. Um, yeah, yeah. Never Some, underestimate something. the power of just, um, and Chaka will know all about this. You know, you, you have what's in the Shepherd book, and then you have the Circuit Overseers visit. Mm -hmm. And when what happens mm -hmm. during the Circuit Overseers visit stays in the Circuit Overseers visit, you know. Uh, that yeah. That's where a lot of the direction about you know how to, the the true direction about how to handle child abuse gets passed on it's done verbally so there isn't really anything in writing um so i, I wouldn't be surprised if, if the true full extent of these changes is only going to be conveyed verbally via the circuit overseas yeah and and they have they have said to the circuit over they have said to the elders that when the circuit overseer visits they will be talking about this direction so, <laughs> so that's gonna happen and i think it's, it's also a bit weird that they've kind of put the rag from underneath the feet of the elders because they've announced these changes to the shunning uh, policies when it's the elders that have to implement them. And the elders mm. were finding out about it on that Friday or maybe even later, depending and on- And the elders are the bad guys. Yes. The elders are the bad guys who've <laughs> who've put many of these people in these situations exactly. of being disfellowshipped and now mm -hmm. they've got egg on their face. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and, and then I was just thinking, so that, well, that governing body update came out on the Friday Maybe if, if the were the elders were meant to have a judicial committee with somebody was, on yeah. the Saturday, oh, um, yeah. how yeah. how were they going to handle it? Like it's just <laughs> weird. <laughs> I'd be like, can we just do a rain check on this judicial committee? We need to uh, just think about this a bit. Oh yeah, that's Thank true. See, yeah. but this is a good example of. There's no Holy Spirit here. The right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing, and neither, or, or neither what if? Hand. Here's another one because it's obviously a global religion and. There's stuff happening in Kingdom Hall congregations literally at every moment around the globe. 
what if someone was actually in a judicial committee? Ah, the <laughs> that's, that's a good when what they just process. said. <laughs> you, this, you about done it's yourself, a new Lord. Update, guys. Like, you can't do this. And they this literally to me. went online afterwards yeah. and were like, what? You know? <laughs> Uh, yeah, but again, man-made organi- These are the, the this is the silliness that you get with a man-made religious organization that's just making it up as they go along. Yeah. You know, so and, and the, the the thing as well is that there, there is so the governing body it, like it, they they try to present the united front, but that's not the case. They've got six committees, and these six committees are operating independently of each other. So you have one committee decide one thing, and then another committee which which has more power can override. So, for example, the coordinators committee, where Sanderson sits, sits, can override the decisions of the teaching committee, which makes the propaganda material. So it's just like there's just it's, it's not just like there's no Holy Spirit, there's no common sense at all as well in, in order to make it just mm. a smooth flowing operation. <clears throat> Indeed. You guys, you guys think Sam and Sam Hurd and Garrett Loesch are fighting this thing? I think they're fighting to stay vertical, to be honest. I think that's True, their yeah. main fight at this <laughs> yeah. point because yeah. they're very old. And uh, I, I think I think their 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 task mentally will be just nod, nod along mm-hmm. and, yeah. and kind of try to look like I'm part of this when really I've checked out, you know, what maybe many spoiler? years ago. Yeah. Like, so, somebody posted sideline to me in this. Yeah, yeah. So Splain Splain sits in the writing committee. So it's, mm. it's kind of like weird. I've tried to get my head around how it works. So you've got the coordinators committee, which I think is the top. Then you've got the teaching committee comes next. Then then you've got the writing committee. So the writing committee, they make the watchtower, they awake, the other books that they publish. And, and I think Splain is quite irritated with a lot of things because when they um, announced, that was the teaching committee that announced that they were going to do less of the placing of the magazines, he came back a year later at the annual meeting and he said, well, don't, don't stop placing the magazines. You know, if we... If you preach to somebody and you don't leave any literature, how are they? And then you don't see them for weeks. How are they going to continue thriving spiritually? So I think he's very irritated with the, mm. uh, the layers above him and the decisions mm. they're making. But can I just say something briefly about Herd? There was um, a comment uh, about him giving a memorial talk. So he's, he's all bearded now, and apparently he was very irritable at this memorial talk thing that he was giving and he was talking about how sick he is and mm. yeah, basically <laughs> very fed up. It's because of the beard. You know, sometimes those things beard. itch. You've yeah. just got to get used to it. You, yeah. And he's not used to the itchiness probably. <laughs> Bless him. Um, <laughs> easy, <laughs> easy X says, at my hall, I was the only one without a tie and there was not even one disfellowshipped or faded attending. Well, that's I guess that's good news. Uh, a good result. A lot of judgmental looks. <laughs> uh, yeah, you would have been getting a lot of side eye probably. Um, Alex Pinantonio says, "I am. I'm going to try and say this in a Scottish accent. I'm in a Scotland congregation, and I showed up in a Scottish kilt last meeting. The elders called me to the back room for a little talk." They said, <laughs> so, "Yeah, a, a wee talk. I can imagine a if you're talk. wearing a full-on kilt." So yeah, um, sisters are allowed to move. wear pants, but he got in trouble for a kilt. Okay, bold move. I think with the kilts, um, it's fair game if you're at an international. They like that sort of stuff if it's mm-hmm. an international convention, but probably not at a congregation meeting. Um, yeah, so sorry. Um, but that was kind of makes me want to be a sister showing showing up in a beard now. Really throw them yeah. off. My, I, I think my question: to grow their beards? Do we still have to pluck our chin ears now, or can we just? My let question: them all grow If I out? were one of the elders in the back room, would be: Have you gone commando? I think that's that's the question <laughs> on everyone's minds. Um, so, so sorry. So a special a special needs talk I see coming for yeah. undergarments. Yeah, yeah, watch Maybe out for a Ma- Marilyn Monroe moment in those situations. <laughs> um, so Dion's thumb ring says, never baptized, so I'm not Ooh. disfellowshipped, and I wasn't invited to the memorial. Yeah, that you've slipped through the loophole there. Um, Alex yeah. Pinantonio says, by the way, I think we must not, I repeat, must not wear beards, and the sisters must wear skirts, no pants. Call me old-fashioned. 
but this is my point of view. Sorry, well, we all get our opinions. We all get to have our opinions, I guess. Uh, but thank you for that. Is this the, thank... the groaning that someone else had mentioned? <laughs> there, there's a bit of groaning going on there. There's from, a bit of Alex. groaning. <laughs> but we all get to groan sometimes. Um, thank you very much, Misty, for becoming a, a YouTube member and supporting the channel. That's very, very much appreciated. Uh, Anya Lokai, I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly, says, great point on the internet. Since the Borg came out of the mysterious curtain, people are starting to see what buffoons these nine are. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Um, Sarah, uh, thank you for the super chat, says, can we have tight pants back next? I liked those. <laughs> I didn't know that they were even an issue, to be honest. Did that catch me by surprise when they were jumping up and down about that? I mean, I was like... When I was a Jehovah's Witness, I would have liked to see a few tight pants, but uh, I missed <laughs> miss that one, you know? Um, I got pulled out one time of service for tight pants, so... Oh, really? I got, I got beef. Yeah, it was my favorite pair of pants from Express, and they were just like, uh, brother, now, you know what the direction is about pants. <laughs> okay. Ch Chuck, you can be honest with us good. here. Have you ever worn tight pants? I think I missed a trick there. <laughs> <laughs> I should. Shaka was but a good boy. Yeah, his it pants was in... were always suitably baggy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 the regret I have now. The regret I have. But it, it became official policy. So although it was just Tony Morris's rumblings, it yeah. it made its way into the Watchtower. And then the following, what they did as well was the following cycle of circuit visits the elders and ministry of servants meetings it was part of the outline as well after he gave the type puns talk yeah. so i don't know whether they're going to reverse made that. it into the circuit overseer guidelines as well mm. um again two months from now two months from now let's up there going the governing body does not have an issue with the size of your pants <laughs> <laughs> Don't write it off, I guess. Uh, and also, I think probably Stephen Lett and David Splain are now, uh, with Tony gone, are now the the most con controversial, can we say? Um, mm -hmm. Probably. They're the most likely to come out with something out outrageous. Um, mm -hmm. Welsh Backgammon says, has there ever been any attempt to keep an actual log of who is included in the 144,000? Um, yeah, that's that's mm. probably something for a different video, but uh, f for sure they they've that was actually one of the things that woke me up was at the time when I woke up they didn't have the current faithful and discreet slave teaching, and the teaching was that the governing body represented all of the anointed, and my issue or one of my issues was well, quite clearly they're not keeping a like a database or, or keeping like a network of, of the anointed and consulting them so how can they possibly say they're representing them um so no that's unfortunately one of the many areas in which we can say it doesn't have to make sense because it's a cult um and trent coleman final comment that we can take today uh, i am a trans man who was told uh, trent's been on the channel by the way uh, we did a video together I'm a trans man who was told that if I come back, I had to dress as a woman. But with the new changes, I wonder if now pants, shirts, tie would be okay. There we go. We've come full circle for you there, Trent. Um, but yeah, some incredible changes. Um, again, I'm very grateful to the um, 500 plus uh, who have tuned in. It's, we've had a really enjoyable conversation dissecting this. What we typically do uh, on JW Watch episodes to conclude is we go around the panel for concluding comments. I've said everything I need to say. Uh, perhaps, Sherry, we can start with you. Ah, why do you have to start with me? <laughs> <laughs> like, Surprise! Uh, because, I didn't get a homework. <laughs> because you're a woman and because ah. women get deprived their voices in this organization. Yes. So it's very, very okay. important that we hear a female perspective. That's why. <laughs> ah, so I get I get to open the meeting and then you follow. Yes, you do. Let's yeah. Let's see. Uh, well, this, this is just this brain. is the first, uh, except for our interview uh, that we did. This was really the first piece of content I've been able to participate in, and so um, I think I'm just going to come from a place of gratitude and say thank you for for having me, and thank you everyone who's tuned in, and um, I've enjoyed the discussion, and it'll be. 
it'll be interesting to see in the the months to come and the years to come what else the organization will give us to discuss and talk about and um yeah it'll kind of just be interesting in time to see where things go in my opinion absolutely well said um and chaka what are your thoughts <clears throat> yeah just as someone who's recently left the religion and i I, I was always kind of when i was physically and mentally out. I was looking for the loophole, the opportunity to jump ship. And uh, thankfully something presented itself. And if you're in that situation, this could be the opportunity. You know, this could be the chance to say, look at all these changes. You could use this as a justification. No, although you don't need to give anyone a justification, but to your family, to your friends, the elders believe in the religion. So yeah, just take the chance when it presents itself. You never know when you have another chance like this, when it becomes so blatant that this is a cult a man-made thing that uh, has no Holy Spirit and no common sense. Absolutely. And Jonathan, your thoughts? I'll pick her back with Sherry briefly and just say it's my first time on, and I'm very pleased to have been able to be part of this. The first video I ever watched was one of yours, and it had such a big impact on me, um, and I, that's great. As far as the topic at hand, it's great to be here. I mean, as far as the topic at hand, um, they're floundering. It's it's kind of obvious that they're floundering and why. And I think that they're making decisions that they will come to regret later. But for now, they're going to keep doing this until they stabilize themselves. Which may take some time, <laughs> to put it mildly. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you so much. Uh, I've really enjoyed having this conversation. Viewers, uh, don't forget that you can catch similar live streams and content by subscribing to the Lloyd Evans channel. That's all we have time for. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.